Okay, so <clears throat> today I'm gonna show you how to make something like this. Which in context sounds something like this. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna do like quick uh, neuro kind of base tutorial thing. This is uh, my first tutorial ever, so um, bear with me. Um, I might not explain myself like all that well, but I'll try my best. Um, Uh, so, I'm going to start from scratch, and I'm just going to use um, an operator to begin with. I'm just going to get rid of those two audio tracks because I don't need them. Um, so, I'm going to start by <coughs> um, what I'll do is... Um, I'll turn the course of this second oscill oscillator up to two. So I think that means that it's adding in um, like more like uh, square wave free, uh, harmonics, maybe. I can't quite remember. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, and then I will go into oscillator three and go into here and um, change this to the even setting and draw in some random stuff. Um, I'm going to turn this fine, ch um, I'll turn the course up to two on there as well. I'm going to turn the um, fine tuning up to About 18 maybe, and then I'm going to mess with this a bit more. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So, um, <coughs> I'm going to turn the spread up a bit. turn glide on and turn the time up to 240 milliseconds or something like that and I'm going to turn the voices to one so um, it only plays one now. <laughs> I'm going to turn this pitch envelope all the way up to 100% um, <clears throat> and I'll turn the decay uh, 410 sounds kind of okay. Um, okay, so um, um, I think that sounds kind of okay for, for the initial patch. Um, <coughs> Let's see. So now I want to um, um, I'm gonna add an amp on on afterwards, and I normally turn the dry wet down quite a lot. I'm gonna leave it on this um, heavy setting, uh, and then I think um, uh, 
Okay, um, I'm going to put a, a convolution reverb on it after this amp. Um, and I quite like this. Um, where is it? Uh, this bass bin LR setting. I think it sounds kind of cool. I'll turn the dry wet down a bit and I'll turn the decay up a bit. Okay, sounds a bit weird at the moment, but <clears throat> I'm sure I'll start to sound better in a minute. Um, then what I'll do is I will add, um, I'll add a saturator, turn the drive up to maybe five or six and turn soft clipping on. Um, I'm going to turn the width and depth all the way up. Um, <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all these, <clears throat> go into the, um, the macro uh, window and I'm gonna map uh, not the drive I'm gonna map the frequency to this macro dial because um, you get like different kind of um, characteristics depending on like what part of like what frequencies um, are being uh, saturated if that makes any sense um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an auto filler here, but I'm going to group it <clears throat> and I'm going to throw in another auto filter. I'll name this one, um, band pass and I'll name this one, uh, notch. <clears throat> so I'll make this a band pass. <laughs> And I'll make this one a notch and turn the, the Q all the way down. Um, I guess that's, that'd be the, the uh, yeah, the bandwidth. Um, <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, because I can't, I don't think I can, yeah, I can't map them to these macros because they're in an audio effects rack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map them to one of these macros. Um, so I'll map the frequency of the, the notch and the frequency of the band pass to the same macro knob. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll map that macro to this knob here. So now I don't need to like do it in. What the hell? Sorry about that. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now I don't need to do anything in this. Um, um, in the um, audio effects rack to affect these filters. Now I can just do it in here. Okay, now I want to add a glue compressor on the end. I normally turn the ratio up to 10 and the release to 1.2 and the attack all the way down. Okay, so now we'll see what that sounds like. That might have been horribly loud. I apologize if it was. <laughs> Like, and yeah, as you can see, like, you 
get a lot of variation just out of messing with these these two dials. Um, sometimes it kind of you can um, like make it sound even crazier if you add some <clears throat> just some sine wave over the top of it, but I'm not sure what it'll sound like with this. <laughs> a bit muddy. Um, I might add a, uh, a macro knob for that and it make just just because um, someone might find a use for it. Um, so I'll rename this one sign, rename this one um, filter. And rename this one uh, saturator. Um, and yeah, I think I think I'll leave it at that. Sorry if it was a bit, um, <clears throat> like, quick and not very easy to follow. Like, it's my first ever tutorial, so, like, just, um, I'm sure I'll get better at doing stuff. Um, um so, yeah, um, <clears throat> I'll be doing more tutorials and things soon. Um, gonna do like arrangement stuff and like uh, all kinds of things really. Like I'm not the best at bass sound design, um, but I know some stuff. So I'll probably do some more bass tutorials as well. Um, check out my SoundCloud page and all that kind of stuff. It'll all be in the description. And I hope you liked the tutorial, I guess. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later.